Good morning. Welcome to Sat Saturday for uh, Gary's Movie Aporium this morning. And today's uh, video is going to be most three or nearly 90% of it's probably eBay. Um, I picked up a, a variant number of uh, titles. I picked up a pretty decent amount of Blu ray in this video this morning. Probably predominantly Blu ray. But let's get started. I'm just going to grab what I stacked up. Right off the top here, I got a double feature of Eddie and the Cruisers 1 and Eddie and the Cruisers 2, Eddie Lives. Uh, I think I paid somewhere in the vicinity of $17 or $18 for this. But you do get two titles, you divide it by two, you're basically paying $8.50. So really not a lot more. A uh, little, little bit more pricier than I would have liked to have paid, but uh, it is a Shout Factory and Studio Canal. Uh, Eddie and the Cruisers... Uh, Eddie and the Cruisers Part 1 is 94 minutes from 1983 and uh, Part 2 is much longer at 105 minutes and, 19, and was made in 1988 so it was a 5 year gap between 1 and 2 uh, I liked 2 quite a bit but not on the level of the first one but it's a pretty good sequel it's pretty fun there are a lot of good uh you know, the kind of kind of like the Bruce Springsteen kind of rock throughout this movie. Uh, there's, in the Eddie Cruisers 2, there's a guy that wants to wail on his guitar. And Eddie doesn't really want him to because he, he, does, he doesn't think that it basically should be about one person. It's about the band. You want the whole band to gel, not just, you know, somebody standing out. Uh, and he learns that by the end. Um... I really thought they were both good movies, but like I said, I think Eddie and the Cruisers with that on the dark side really sets the pace for how good this film is. Uh, very well done. I think both were uh, Canadian based or can Canadian made. At least that had it like had that feeling to it a little bit. Like it's slightly different than a feature that comes to the you know the United States theaters, but uh, had a killer. Uh, top 10 or number one song on the dark side and had a really good song with a song tender years on the first one uh, i think that's what makes it stand out as a soundtrack they're both good movies but i think the soundtrack really makes eddie and the cruiser stand out over the second one but uh happy to pick that up and then next up i got i got the uh Blu-ray plus digital uh, six-movie Tremors collection, limited edition steelbook. Six-movie, six-movie collection uh, has uh, Tremors one through six, and I, I'm not sure if I showed in one of my other videos that I had picked up part seven. I'm not sure if I had showed that yet. Uh, this wasn't a Walmart exclusive. Here's a look at the steel, and it is a bona fide steel. It's not just a tin. Uh, yeah, I got Shrieker Island, I think that was one. This has Tremors 1, 2, 3. 2 is app called Aftershocks. 3 is Back to Perfection. Tremors, the legend begins. Tremors 5, Bloodlines, and Tremors, A Cold Day in Hell. Uh, out of these six, probably my weakest was the Western one. I, it's no knock on Westerns. I love Westerns, but I thought... I don't know. I just thought it was kind of messy a little bit. Uh, I heard people say they didn't like a cold day in hell. I don't know. I I thought it was unique because it was in the snow, and it wasn't in, you know it wasn't in a a deserted um, like you know like out in the out in the desert again. And I don't know. I, I I admired it for trying something new. And I don't know. People were saying they didn't really like Jamie Kennedy in it, but I don't know. I find Jamie Kennedy funny. Uh, go back and see. Scream 1 and 2, he stands out in those movies, in my eyes, but uh, well, I got the Tremors movie collection, 1 through 6, there's a look at the posters for those, perspective uh, original movie and its sequels, uh, I don't know if this is how many discs it is, but they're all PG-13, oh, all but Part three, back to perfection. That's PG. All all the others are PG thirteen, and it has a making of Tremors commentary, deleted and extended scenes, 
production notes, and much more. So happy you get that one. And then I picked up uh, this. I think this is like one of the lone ones that I didn't. I did. I went here when I was out and about or uh, on past waves, but I thought I'd throw this in. Uh, the video this morning is from Big Lots. Um, it's Cat Dog Season One. Well, Season One Part One, I should say. But I picked it up for three bucks. Uh, it's a Shout Factory, 1998. DVD producer Brian Ward uh, from a Nick Nickelodeon, of course. It says it was in uh, 2000. I don't think the show was in 2011. Per se, maybe it was. I was thinking it was longer than that. Yeah, it says 1998. I think it was uh, Viacom International must have made this to disc in 2011 or something. Because I knew this was a lot longer than that ago. Because it's been a long time since I has been on Nickelodeon. And then I picked this up as part of a uh, two-pack uh, someone was offering. I had already gotten it in the wave, but... I got it, got it again just so I could get the one movie, and I felt, felt like two movies is better than just paying for a single one. That probably would have cost me a little more than buying the two in the long run. Murder Party uh, to, from 2007, a magnet releasing, 80 minutes. I did see bits and pieces of this uh, last Halloween. Kind of zany, but... All right, though, at the same time. That's uh, Murder Party. And back to Blu-ray. And this was what I meant when I said I was at the, not recent Dollar Tree, but like a few months back during the very tail end of the wave. Um, Don Cherry's Rock'em Sock'em Hockey 26. Uh, don't really know what to really think about this. I know, I know of Don Cherry. Uh, he's a he's a hockey expert, a legend, if you will. Uh, clocks in at around 65 minutes, 16 by 9. Uh, Don Cherry's Rock'em Sock'em Hockey and the Coach has another must-have volume for hockey fans of all for all ages. There ain't really much to say about this. If you don't know who Don Cherry is, it's irrelevant because you know that. He's not a, you know, you'd have to follow hockey to know who, who he is or, you know, know of hockey games and stuff like that. And then I got another uh, Big Lots title here. It's a Pang Brothers uh, film, Diary. Uh, a new thriller from the creators of Bangkok Dangerous and the Eye. 85 minutes on this one. Languages in Cantonese and subtitles in English. Um, 2006, Image Entertainment, and un Universe. Uh, I was thinking this was English, but not really a big whoop. I mean, you know, as long as there's not overly a lot of talking and you can catch, keep up with the subtitles, I don't mind that. But I don't, I'd rather it be dubbed. But I also got it because it does this, like, kind of like thing with a cover. See, it's like... Kind of has that red tint to it a little bit there with a lady. I don't know if that's trying to be an apparition or... I have no idea, but... It's look pretty interesting. I love the cover to it. You can see a lot better in the store because the lighting's a lot brighter. But, uh... Then I ended up getting this. Uh, Freeway Killer. Uh, Scott Anthony Lee, Cole Williams, Dusty Sorg, and Michael Rucker. Glad I got this trying to get it in the last wave or two. I even think I might have got it a long time ago, but I'm not sure. Or I was trying to get it, and I never got around to getting it. One of the two. I know it just looks so familiar to me. Might be because I've seen it in a lot of videos. And that's Freeway Killer. And then I ended up getting a DVD off uh, eBay here. Kevin uh, Farley, Trish Cook, Alexander Eckert. Dude, where's my dog? How do you find a dog you can't see? To me, this looks like they're trying to encourage kids to take the slip out and, uh, you know, go all pen or pencil with it. And I don't like that. Because if you get a little kid that gets curious about this when you're not home or whatever and you're someone's babysitting, 
Uh, just going to make the kid want to pull the slip out and draw on it. But uh, that's uh, Dude, Where's My Dog? I don't know if this is supposed to be a spoof of Dude, Where's My Car? Or if it's like a cheap sequel that went directly to video. Because it is, it very much is written like Dude, Where's My Car? Um, 82 minutes, 5 point surround sound, screen media, it's PG for Blairwood Entertainment. And I believe, um, Kevin Farley is a brother of Chris Farley, because it looks an awful lot like him, like, majorly like him. But, uh, pick this up. Pretty interested by the cover, what it'd be like. There's a look at the back. There, and like I said, there's Kevin Farley right there. See what I mean? He kind of looks a lot like Chris. I'm thinking that is his brother, because like I said, it does look like an awful lot like him. And then I picked up the Descent Original Unrated Cut. Got this on eBay as well. Has a slew of uh, extras on it. Can't really see... This this I seen at the drive-in. This this movie on the big screen at night at the at the drive-in was really probably one of my best experiences on an outdoor screen. Uh, just for the fact that you know it's so dark, and then when the flashlights would hit these creatures, I mean it it brought the film to life because the screen was so huge. It was like one of the biggest screens that I've ever, I've ever seen movies on outdoors. Uh, really had fun with this one. This one was really creepy. Um, I've actually been in a cavern system in Virginia. I think it was called Luray Caverns. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Uh, it very much had that backdrop feel to this movie. Except with this movie, you didn't really have a guided, you know, walking system. They had to kind of maneuver around rocks and water and and things like that but in this one it just it, when I went to the cavern system it felt like these I didn't know these creatures existed at the time in this movie but if you, if I could rewind time and have those creatures in there it would be it would be wickedly <laughs> I can't imagine what these girls went through in this movie because if that would have been real I would have been so intense I mean I could see why you know no one would survive in there because I mean, you could, they could hide behind, I mean, there was uh, the rock quarries and stuff that you could, anything could hide behind it while you're walking through and attack you, you know, anytime. Uh, it's just really a creepy experience to go into a cavern, even though you're being guided with lights and, and you know, there's lights throughout installed in there, but, you know, how do you know one of them make those you know, aren't going to fall from the ceiling and go right through you, you know. Just kind of intense going into a cavern system such as this. And I've been in an, in an underground cavern in my hometown where I was uh, raised. They have a cavern system. The only way you can go through is uh, with a boat. And when you go through, you have to duck the entire time. <laughs> And it's just not fun because, like I said, you don't know what's in the, you know, they don't say, it isn't about the dark, it's more about what's in the dark, you know. Uh, makes you wonder if something couldn't get into those cavern systems, you know, even on a toured uh, presentation like that. And then next up, I got a Michael Douglas and uh, Glenn Close, Fatal Attraction. People just can't stop talking about this movie, says Time Magazine. This was a very intense uh, revenge uh, We'll call it pseudo horror thriller because just for the fact that how violent it gets at times, uh, everybody I'm sure probably knows about the boiled rabbit. <laughs> at this point, this movie's been around. Oh God, yeah, this movie's been around since 1987. I'm sure practically everybody's probably watched this by now. Really good thriller. Set the pace for thrillers in the 80s, more or less. And then I got a um, an American Werewolf in London uh, steelbook here from Arrow Inter. Oh, this is an Arrow. Okay, Arrow. I didn't even know it. It's an Arrow. Uh, I believe they're from the out of the UK, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 2021. 
This came out on Steelbook, 97 minutes. The movie obviously didn't. Uh, yeah, it says 1981. It does not seem like it was that long ago. Uh, 1981, rated R. Really, uh, my probably my coup de gras of all werewolf films right here, just because of uh, Rick Baker's uh, makeup effects for this film. He did a really damn good job in this. So convincing. I watched a werewolf movie last night. Um, what was it called? Uh, Night Shadow from the 80s. My problem with it was there was like this really hokey kung fu fighting, but it was a pretty good cheap cheap uh, werewolf movie though. Nonetheless, it, it had it was pretty fun, but I don't I didn't like the chain. No, I didn't really like all the kung fu in it. I just thought it was kind of getting hokey too much when it did that. But overall, it was a pretty fun experience. And then I uh, move on to the next uh, title, the Seven Movie Outlaw Collection, Smokey and the Bandit. Pretty uh, heavy set here. Um, I'm not sure how it comes. I think maybe one and two are on the same disc. Three has its own disc, I think. Because there's only three Smokey and the Bandit movies. And then I want to say... Yeah, it's got Smokey and the Bandit, Bandit 2, Part 3. And then it's got Bandit, Bandit Goes Country, Bandit, Bandit, Bandit. Bandit, Beauty and the Bandit, and Bandit... Bandit, Bandit, Silver Angel. Uh, and these were all made for TV movies, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. They might have been in syndication as well. I'm pretty sure that's what they were. Um, I'm not sure how they packaged them. I'd rather not open it right now because, I don't know, I'm just kind of in the process of some moving. I just don't want to open a bunch of stuff. But uh, it's a seven-movie outlaw collection. As you can see, there's the titles kind of going all Star Wars with you, the way they wrote it. Pretty neat. And then it tells the if they're widescreen or full frame. Uh, they're all widescreen for the original movies with uh, Burt Reynolds, and the rest are all full frame. So, uh, why... Part 3 of Smokey and the Bandit has the 235 by 1 ratio different than the other two, but um, I think his name's Brian Bloom went on to play Bandit. I'm pretty sure that was his name. But uh, the direct-to-TV movies are pretty darn good, too. They're just not on the level, you know, with the Burt Reynolds ones, but then... Uh, Kind of like to get in mode for the new Mortal Kombat movie that's supposed to be hitting HBO Max soon. I got Mortal Kombat Legends, uh, Scorpion's Revenge. Kind of a little bit of a rough slip up there. Because I got some peeling going on with the blue. I don't know if you can see that there on film. See it there? It was peeling. Uh, I don't like it when they make these slips like that with the kind of like the fraying aluminum foil kind of uh, cover. I don't really like that, but it does emboss a little where you can feel where the character is. I watched this movie. It's really violent. I really love this movie. It kind of felt like it was the unofficial sequel to uh, Mortal Kombat or like a prequel, if you will. But uh, I really like this one. And then I picked up a uh, Scream Factory title here. Very classic horror film. Blu-ray plus DVD combo pack collector's edition. Motel Hell. It takes all kinds of critters to make Farmer Vincent's fritters. Pick this one up. Uh, 101 Minutes from 1980. From MGM as well. Whole slew of uh, special features on this one. Uh, it's a little bit pricey. Excuse me, is around twenty bucks, I believe, which for me is kind of pricey, but it, it is a, a Scream Factory, so nonetheless the price. But some people on eBay are really liking the price gouge. I've kind of like pinned through the stuff that's overpriced and just kind of 
automatically go to put it uh, on the upper part of the page for your uh, searching you can uh, search it by the lowest price first that's what I always do because that's just the way I go with movies I don't want to overpay uh, even if I want it badly I won't I I even talk some of the sellers down a few bucks because I think you know they're making a lot of money off a lot of these and they don't need that kind of profit um, Next up, I got a Blu-ray plus digital uh, movie here starring Robin Williams and Shelley Duvall. And I put that little, I took the plastic off the off this disc, or this physical uh, media here, uh, and I put it on the front cover and just kind of placed it there. It just kind of felt like that was pretty cool. I didn't want to ditch that. It's like that can of spinach. I think it's kind of neat, so I put it there, kind of like my Popeye's arm. And I kept it intact. I think I might have put tape on the back of it, but eh, it'll be all right. But uh, that's Popeye, and comes with some special features: PG, 1980, 113 minutes. And I just thought it'd be a good idea to pick this up because we no longer have you know Robin Williams to you know to see in each and every movie anymore, and very much missed by the Hollywood community and his fans. It's just too bad he had to take his own life because he was so talented. Um, next up, I got the Super 6, the series. I had to get this. This just looks so, so unique. It's from United Artists and MGM. Uh, two discer here. Has a slew of uh, animated <coughs> episodes. From 2013 uh, is when this was released. Um, I'm not sure when the show. Okay, it says the show. Okay, 1966 from Marish Films and Lee Rich and the Patty Freling Enterprises. And that's uh Super Six. It looks weird looking at it in the camera because it looks backwards. <laughs> The, it's the Super 6, the series. I don't know if they had any more of these around or have them around, but I was happy to pick that up. And then I picked up the five-movie Ice Age collection from Blue Sky. It has all of the Ice Age movies, one through five. Uh, they clock, uh, clock in anywhere between 81 minutes and... 94 with two of them clocking in at 94 uh their years range from 2002 right on up to 2016 which with uh ice ice age collision course and i would have liked to seen a sixth one just to you know round out a double trilogy just would have made a little bit more sense to me i don't like it when films stop at part four or part five like shrek did i know they said something about making another shrek movie but to me, if you're going to start into the new trilogy, you should make it another, I don't know, like a fifth and a sixth and just, you know, see how they do. If they do well, you could continue it, but I don't really think animated series should get into that triple, triple, uh, triple, triple feature territory, in my, in my, my opinion, because the character kind of grows stale at that point. But that's uh, Ice Age Collection. Really happy to have that. Goes good with my uh, DreamWorks uh, collection I picked up not too long ago. And then I'm a big sucker for um, stop motion animation. And I got this as part of a double pack that I got from a seller on eBay. The Sandman and the Lost City, or Sand of Dreams. It's a double proof film here. I uh, really love the animation in here. kind of has that... Um, James and the Giant Peach a little bit look to it a little bit on the back mixed with Rankin Bass that kind of you know that kind of uh, idea it's a Shout Kids as well uh, I can't believe somebody would have gotten this in the wave because it's just like this is a Shout Kids you know you wouldn't, I'm pretty sure they got it for a dollar 83 minutes 178 by 1 from 2014 it's a back films presents a scopus median production 
And that's what I mean. It kind of has a James and the Giant Peach look to it a little bit. With, along with Rankin Bass. I really want to watch this. I might even watch this tonight. Just for something different. To, you know, break up the monotony of watching horror all the time. Yeah, I might watch this one. I might leave it out. It's 83 minutes. Yeah, because my wife works till 5, so we should be pretty good shape so I could watch something. And then I picked up Open Season 4 Movie Collection. I believe this is all there are in the Open Season series. Um, open Season 1, Open Season 2, Open Season 3, and Open Season 4, Scared Silly. And I opened this because it felt like there were runners. But here's that. And then... Three and four together there. Very happy to get this entire series all on a, all in one house. Um, I don't like the doors when they do that because it feels like they uh, <laughs> the movies are running free. They uh, vary in length from uh, let's see, seventy five minutes all the way up to. 86 minutes with the first one being the longest by a, by a minute um, let's See what years they are First one is 2006 second one 2008 uh, Third one 2010 and we didn't get another sequel until six years later after after part three with uh, open season four scared silly So they waited about five six years to do another one uh, but before that, they had done one every other couple years, which makes sense. I'm glad Sony continued on with them. I, I think all of these are good, honestly. They're not on the level probably of the first one, obviously, for budgetary reasons. And uh, the main a a voice actors are different after part one, I believe, too. And I'm not sure if they kept them all the same for certain characters throughout. I just know that from one to two, there's a difference. But I, I thought they did a really good job getting somebody different in part two to do the voices. They did, you know, really not a major difference, but you do notice, like, you don't have Ashton Kutcher and uh, uh, Martin Lawrence in the first two, or in the first one. But uh, it's an open season movie collection. Happy to get that. And then uh, in honor of the passing of the lead rapper here for uh, Fat Boys. I decided to pick this up, the Archive Collection. Uh, the Fat Boys are disorderly. It's a raucous comedy in the tradition of the Three Stooges. Very much see that with the, with these guys. Very Three Stooges-like. Would like to see some more comedies from these uh, gentlemen. Very talented rappers. Head of their time, if you will. Uh, even got to perform with the uh, legendary Beach Boys. In a collaboration, uh, really funny movie <laughs> about three disorderlies that are trying to stop. Uh, I want to say the lead baddie in this is a, is a nephew, maybe. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I can't really remember if that's what he does. Yeah, I think his name is Uncle Albert. Is what he keeps referring to him as. And he's trying to swindle him out of his money because... Or try tries to hope he dies, basically, so he gets his money so he can pay off this... Uh, he looks like a Colombian drug lord kind of guy, and he owes him big time. Like, he practically owes him the shirt. Out. And because at one point the guy goes, well... He goes, oh, well, then all of this will be mine. And he goes, well, wrong, Larry. He goes, most of this will be mine. So, you know, I have this feeling that uh, he owes them in the millions. Let's put it that way. So I ain't going to tell you the rest, but pretty pretty swell plot in this movie. You had fun with it. I've watched this like 30, 40 times probably over the years. And then next up, I got a... Uh, very happy with this collection. I um, think it's a UK release based on the two banners at the bottom on the left and the right, the blue and red. A little uh, part of the cardboard uh, covering here. A Nightmare on Elm Street collection. The uh, original first seven nightmares. 
uh, Nightmare Collection. 655 minutes on this one. And it does have all of them. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, five discs. I don't know. Yeah, okay, the first disc is by itself for the movie Nightmare on Elm Street. Two and three are on disc two. Disc three has Nightmare four and five. And disc four has Freddy's Dead, Final Nightmare, and Wes Craven's New Nightmare. So I do have them all. And disc five is an all-new retrospective fear himself, the life and crimes of Freddy Krueger. So it gives you a retrospect on the whole legacy of the Freddy Krueger uh, character and... Um, his is uh kind of like kind of like cringy background uh because i don't know i've always kind of felt like he is a bit of a pervert really i mean i i know i shouldn't say that because i mean he is a horror icon but um i honestly i they say he has a thing for kids and they look at it as a child killer but it feels like it's uh, kind of more like with pedophilia than anything, and especially in Freddy vs. Jason, I mean, he literally, he's licking the back of a picture of a little girl, and I just, I just I kind of think he's always been a little bit of a, like, have a thing for little kids, I don't know, I just, that's one reason why I don't like Freddy as good as, like, Jason and Michael, because there's no reason for them to be creepy like that. They just want to kill. I think that's why I kind of cringe on that. But really good set nonetheless. And it's really thick. Five disker. All in house. And I have all the Nightmare on Elm Streets now. I, not that I didn't. But I think they were like really old DVD translations. Or transfers if you will. And then um, I got a collector series of the classic... Uh, from, I believe it was from the 80s. I feel stupid if I don't get it right. Um, it might have been, yeah, it's barely the 80s, but I thought it might be late 80s. It's Little Monsters. And I really like uh, Vestron video packaging. Kind of gives it that special presentation feel. And they always do these really shiny, like, sleek looking covers. Really fun film. This reminds me that I need to pick up The Wizard from uh, Freddy uh, Savage. Because I've been wanting that one for a while too. Uh, people probably didn't know that the, his friend here, I believe his name's Maurice. Um, it's played by Howie Mandel from, uh, uh, what's that game show? <laughs> I can't think of it right now. Um. I keep thinking it's a minute to win it, but that's not it. It's, uh, I don't know. I can't ever think of the names when I get on video. But, you know, the one where you undo the case and there's money in it. I don't know. I can't. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the comments if I, if I re remember to write it down. Uh, not sure who played the bad, bad guy in this one, though. Like, um, the, the bad monster in this. But, uh. Really like this film. Makeup uh, translation, transformations and stuff in this were really well. Or you know, like the way they did the makeup for the monsters was really unique. And there's a look at the back. Really fun film. I recommend if you don't have it in your collection to pick it up. And see, Larry and Melissa want this one, but uh, I ended up buying it too because I'm a big uh, Nirvana fan. Uh, Kurt Cobain about a son, his own story in his own words. Uh, Sidetrack Films, 1080i, True HD. It's a shout factory too, as well. Maybe that's why they were trying to get it too. Maybe they like the, the shout ones or they're big Nirvana fans too. Uh, select bonus features on this one. Looks kind of interesting. Uh, remarkable induces a sense of intimacy that is unprecedented about in movies about rock stars. Says Seattle Post. Let's look at the back. And then I got another collection today. Uh, in this video, it's the Police Academy: The Complete Collection. And there's the side of what they look like. 
has all seven uh, Police Academy films, even Part 7. Uh, I think Part 7 has its own own disc, physical disc to itself. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how they did this. Oh, okay, Police Academy 1 and 2 are together. 3 and 4 are together. 5 and 6 are together. And Police Academy 7, like I said, by itself. I wasn't sure how they did it for sure. I thought that's how they did it, but... 611 minutes on this one. And at this point, you should know what Police Academy is about. Uh, don't even think I own these on deep. I think I got a cheaper collection at the like big lots or whatever uh, that had like one, two, and three maybe, and then I got like the one that had maybe had four, five, and six on DVD. And I don't know if I ever got part seven or they threw seven in into that other one, but I think I had gotten them all at one point. But this is much better to look at than that Warner Brother you know, collaborated all in one set kind of thing look because it's kind of kind of plain. It's good if you can't afford the Blu-ray, but I recommend picking this up just for the, you know, nostalgia factor. I went to the theater to see all of those. And here's my, what I feel my grand prizes of this video this morning. These came like this paid a lot for these I paid like 60 bucks for this one um, the complete collection of uh, mash seasons 1 through 11 the Academy Award winning film is in this as well and that's what I picked up mash and there's what they come in right there so I got the entire season of I don't have life after mash or whatever it was called but uh, for what I'm, I did remember watching. It was not in even remotely in the vein of of the heartfelt stuff that went on in this series. Uh, I used to bash this when I was little, but I don't know. There's something about it. It's a 34 disc set. Just said, Gary, I think your redemption time's over. I think you need to apologize to this show because this this show was a pivotal part of the uh, was it the 70s? late 70s maybe early 80s yeah well it's actually early 70s 72 to 83 and I might have been part of it too because I was only two years old when this came out uh and by the time it ran in its course I was all of 13 and this this, this kind of show wouldn't have done it for me at that age group but that's mash and like I said you get 34 disc in this set from 20th Century Fox and um, the show is full frame the mash film is widescreen presentation uh, there's nearly 7,000 minutes of the show and nearly 120 minutes or two hours for the movie that's on this as well so I'm gonna put that back in here just to preserve its uh, preserve its um, you know state of being. I don't want to want it to get all messed up. And here's my best one. I think the entire. I love this show. I love the characters in this show. This show was so great when it was out. I really, I really miss uh, Carol Carol O'Connor and Gene Stapleton. Not that I don't. Miss seeing Rob Reiner and Sally Struthers on in this show, but I really it was this to me it was well worth spending sixty five dollars for. All in the family. That's bonus features: a new interview with Norman Lear. Those were the days. All in the family documentary: the television 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 revolution begins. Justice for all. Uh, the original family pilot. Those were the days second All in the Family pilot. Gloria spinoff pilot up is all. So it does have a the character of Gloria gets a pilot spinoff in this set too. Uh, it does have an Archie Bunker's uh, Place pilot episode on here. It has a 704 Hauser pilot episode spinoff. A 40 page collectible book with essays by television critic Tom Shales and media professor uh, Marty Kaplan. So. If there's a complete series that you really want to get and and you and you really uh 
Love this show. I'm just noticing this was ripped a little bit. I don't know what happened. But, uh, I, don't know, I need to see what's going on with that disc. But uh, this is the quintessential quintessential show to watch if you like stuff, you know, like like this, like classic TV. That this is the way to go. And I don't know what happened to that. I just noticed that. I, I see it set in there. But uh get to the mystery of this. <laughs> Yeah, because that shouldn't look like that. I didn't even, I wouldn't even have thought that would have did that. Unless it's the, oh wow. Looks like this got broke at one time. I'll have to fix it at some point. Yeah. Makes me feel bad because it's such a classic show. Yeah, it looks like a piece. I'm going to have to get that piece out of there. Sorry if it's taking up the video. Yeah, I don't know where it went to. Yeah, it isn't going to stick in there no more, though. But that's the... This, see where what happened is... I don't know if you can see that on video too well. I'm trying to find it for you. Yeah, see, it had a plastic piece broken off in there. And it was, like, wedging to pull this entire set to one side, like the covering. And it had a, a, one of them plastic pieces is holding the disc in there and it was somehow it got wedged between you know like through the paper but I mean I can tape it from the inside if I have to I just have to get on that at some point but I might leave this set out and then tape it back up here after the video but uh it does come with this uh those were the days uh booklet I don't know if you can see that too good. And so on. It's a bit of a back, you know, retrospect on the show. I'm sure, the, you know, making of the show and the chemistry on set between the actors. Some uh, shots of Norman Lear and Edith and Archie on the piano. Oh, okay, and then it does, okay, it goes on to have what all the episodes are about, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it has, talks about disc one, disc two, disc three, so on and so forth. Talks about, see, I guess it must uh, tell what the episodes are about, which is kind of neat. But uh, I've been trying to watch this for so long. Like on uh, YouTube, because I found some episodes on there. But the problem is a lot of them cut off. And I don't like that, because like, you don't get to see the end of them sometimes. Just kind of kind of whets your ap appetite for watching the show, you know. And I don't know, it just kind of went... Kind of gets you out of the mood of watching when it does that, but I apologize about the end of this video this morning. Um, I'd rather not go back and reshoot it because it's like 40 minutes in. But uh, that's my haul for today. I hope you enjoyed what I picked up. Uh, a lot of classic TV, a lot of collections, a lot of Blu-ray, a lot of classic movies from the 80s and a little bit beyond, or you know, after. And that's my video for this morning. Uh, take care, everybody, and I'll be back in a couple of days with a new video. And once again, I apologize about how long it took with uh, opening that, but I was trying to be careful without, you know, ripping it or whatever. But 
that's that's what happens when you go live. You didn't, you notice little little trinkets of things that go wrong, but that's the fun of making it. Have a good day, everybody. Oh, and uh, by the way, I uh, have a hat made for the channel as well. I don't know if you can see it too good right here. It's just like the shirt. Uh, my wife decided to get a blue hat because they wouldn't let me have a different colored hat to go with a maroon colored shirt. So we got a, a blue shirt. And I have an extra red shirt as an extra if somebody's wanting to buy that. Uh, the shirts are going to cost about $30. And I know that sounds a little bit high, but by the time you uh, pay for the overhead, it's like, I think it's like $25, $23 or $24. And then there's like $5 shipping that I have to pay to have it sent here. And then, you know, I paid about $29 on it and I don't want to take a hit on it. So I charge at least 30 for the shirts. And, you know, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the hats, but I'm just kind of letting you know they're available. Uh, so if you're interested, just let me know. You can comment in the comments below about it. If, if you're not, if not, it's not a big deal. I just more or less got it to kind of dress up the channel a little bit, kind of show, you know, get my name out there. Uh, and everybody, uh, have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video, guys. See you later. Bye.